With the recent rise of interest in creatine, I thought it would be a good idea to tackle it from a few different angles. I figured I'd make this a bit of a series. So, it makes sense for the first place for me to start is with the basics. What is creatine, and is it safe to take? What is creatine? Creatine is an organic compound found in meat, even inside of human muscle tissue, that helps with the creation of energy so that our muscles can move. Normally, we have enough of the body's energy currency to contract our muscles for a few seconds at best. But, through a process facilitated by creatine, we can extend the amount of time our muscles can do work to about 10 seconds before we need to use the energy of a slower energy production system. So how does creatine work? It might be prudent to start with energy to explain this properly. Your body doesn't just produce energy for muscle activations and general work out of nowhere. There is a sort of energy currency of the body called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Whenever a muscle has to do something, be it automatic or consciously done by you, ATP is used in order to give the muscle the energy they need to perform the action or actions. When that happens, ATP, which, as the name implies, is adenine with three phosphate groups attached to it, has one of those three phosphate groups broken off, which causes the release of energy. This energy is then used by the muscles and allows us to perform the work, but leaves us with adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, instead of the useful ATP we need, with two phosphate groups now instead of the original three. Enter phosphocreatine which is creatine that has been transformed in the body to carry a phosphate group that it can freely give up to ADP, transforming it back into ATP and allowing it to be used for energy once again. Progress in a workout is in no small part majorly dictated by the amount of work one can do in the workout. So, if we supplement with creatine, which increases fossil creatine levels in the body, this will allow us to do more high quality work per set and we stand a much better chance to see significant progress from those workouts, provided the exercise is solid and our nutrition and rest are optimal. Other ways creatine can help you gain muscle include improved cell signaling, which can increase satellite cell signaling, which aids muscle repair and new muscle growth, elevated anabolic hormones, such as IGF-1 after taking creatine, elevated water content within your muscle cells, which causes a cell volumization effect that may play a role in muscle growth, reduced protein breakdown, which may increase total muscle mass by reducing muscle breakdown, and lower myostatin levels, which is significant because elevated levels of the protein myostatin can slow or totally inhibit new muscle growth, decreasing growth potential. Studies have shown creatine supplementation to improve gains in strength, fat-free mass, and performance of high-intensity tasks. The two areas it doesn't seem to help via the current research, at least not directly, are running and swimming. That being said, I'd argue that the improvements one can make with a strength training routine and creatine supplementation could have a significantly positive impact on both those sports. So. Indirectly, I'd still say it's of great value to all athletes. But is it safe? Yes. Studies thus far on healthy individuals taking creatine for short, 5 days, medium, 14 days, and long-term use, 10 months to 5 years, have shown no negative impacts on renal function, a major concern raised in the late 90s thanks to some nonsense quote-unquote news that spread from a pretty unreliable source in France. The fact of the matter is, this compound has been very thoroughly researched and deemed as safe, and studies continue to this day to verify this and find other possible benefits of creatine, as well as demographics for whom it could be useful. Which demographics might find creatine useful? This one's relatively easy, as most demographics who could benefit from the supplement have already caught on. Athletes stand to gain a lot from creatine, thanks to the benefits mentioned earlier. There are few, if any, sports where it wouldn't be advantageous to have more lean muscle mass, more strength, and of course, better performance. 
As mentioned, even the two sports that scientifically see no direct benefit from creatine could still make ample use of it by supplementing with it while cross-training to improve their resistance to injury, strength, and lean muscle mass, which would all provide a general increase in their performance in their sport of choice. Male recreational lifters have loved this supplement for a while, and women have recently joined the fray as I mentioned in a previous video on the subject. Link to that in the top right corner now. The goals of one who lift are often to look good, get strong, or some combination of the two, and creatine can help a lot with both of those goals. It makes sense that women have picked up on how valuable a supplement it is, especially with a lot of them focusing on big glutes and thick legs. But seniors, this is where this all gets interesting. At the risk of putting more strain on the creatine supply, I feel it's my duty to report the research that shows its benefit to older adults. Research has shown that although old age seems to come with reductions in lean muscle mass, reductions in strength, and reductions in bone density, quote, there is evidence that creatine ingestion may reverse these changes and subsequently improve activities of daily living, end quote. The research goes on to say, similarly, in older adults, concurrent creatine supplementation and resistance training increase lean body mass, enhance fatigue resistance, increase muscle strength, and improve performance of activities of daily living to a greater extent than resistance training alone. Additionally, creatine supplementation plus resistance training results in a greater increase in bone mineral density than resistance training alone. Higher brain creatine is associated with improved neuropsychological performance, and recently creatine supplementation has been shown to increase brain creatine and phosphocreatine. Subsequent studies have demonstrated that cognitive processing, that is either experimentally following sleep deprivation or naturally due to aging impaired, can be improved with creatine supplementation. End quote. In short, Father Time loves to hijack muscle mass, strength, bone density, neurological function, and as a result, independence from aging populations. But creatine can help curb that issue and shift the tide back in these older adults' favor. That about does it for the basics of creatine, and that means that's about the end of this video. I plan on covering the other topics, like the different forms of creatine out there, and maybe a quick video on how to use it, if that interests you all. So, if it does, let me know in the comment section below. While you're down there, if you like this video and found it helpful, hit the like button and subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified of all of our future videos when they drop. I'll leave the references, along with my social media links, down below. Of course, I'll also leave a link to the Patreon, which has some exclusive content there that isn't available to normal subs. So please go over there, check it out, and become a patron so that you can support me, help me keep me independent, and I can be beholden to nobody. And of course, stay shining, because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace. Peace.